Welcome to Knowledge Box. My name is Alex and today I want to talk about moons. Now it's generally believed that our moon was first created when a Mars-sized planet called Theia smacked into the Earth some 4.5 billion years ago and the debris was flung out into space which gravity collected and pulled together eventually forming our closest celestial neighbour. Personally I love the moon and it's been the source of much excitement throughout the 20th century but compared to those of other planets our moon is kind of boring, it's just a big inactive lump of rock spinning around us in space. So I apologize that I can't talk about something a little closer to home. But let's not forget that we and our moon are part of a massive cosmic family known as the solar system, and there are plenty of other moons within it for us to explore. With that being said, here are four really weird and really awesome moons that are right at our celestial fingertips. Number one, Mimas. That's no moon. Oh. Oh um, no, yeah it is actually, yeah. Named after the giant of Greek mythology, Mimas was discovered to be orbiting Saturn in 1789 by William Herschel, the same guy who discovered Uranus. It's 396 kilometers in diameter and made mainly of rock and ice. Of course, the reason it's on this list is because, geek alert, it looks exactly like the Death Star from the Star Wars saga. Although Mimas's diameter is more than double that of the Death Star's puny 120 kilometers, its biggest crater, named Herschel, uncannily resembles the super super laser focus lens from a galaxy far, far away. Of course, Mimas was first photographed after the release of A New Hope in 1977, so it's nothing more than a really cool coincidence, but a coincidence that's worth knowing about. Number two, Io. Io, the innermost of the four Galilean moons of Jupiter, is a mustard yellow lump of iron orbiting around 422,000 kilometers above Jupiter's surface. It was discovered in 1610 and is one of the only places other than Earth that we've observed volcanic activity and boy, have we observed volcanic activity. Io is home to over 400 volcanoes and over 100 mountains, some of which have peaks higher than Mount Everest. Seriously. Io is neighbored by Europa, which we'll visit in a moment, and Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system. These moons exert attractive forces upon Io, and this gravitational tug of war between the moons and Jupiter itself cause Io to stretch and squash, and this kinetic energy, through a process called tidal flexing, is believed to be the source of the energy needed to power this immensely volcanic moon. Io really is a picture of hell. Volcanoes erupt so frequently on its surface that we photographed it happening many times. There are pretty much no craters on Io either, because there's a constant flow of lava that will fill them in any time that they appear. So while Io is a cool place to look at and study, I wouldn't want to take a holiday there anytime soon. Number three, Miranda. If the solar system were a flock of ducks, Miranda would be the ugly duckling. Sorry Miranda. Discovered as recently as 1948 by Gerard Kuiper, this remarkably unprepossessing moon orbits Uranus and was named after the daughter of Prospero in Shakespeare's The Tempest. Miranda has one of the oddest topographies of any moon or planet that we've discovered so far, with its huge ridges and vast canyons deeper than our own biggest Grand Canyon in Nevada. What's so cool about Miranda is that it's home to Verona Rupees, which is the tallest cliff in the solar system. It's so big that if you were to jump off, it would take you six minutes to hit the ground. That's pretty lunar at Looney. Scientists aren't quite in agreement as to what caused such a volatile landscape to form, but it's most likely due to collisions in the past which caused massive craters and melted the surface of the moon into the weird and wonderful shapes that we observe today. Miranda really is the ugliest rock in the solar system. Number four, Europa. If you haven't heard of Europa, Listen up. What if I told you that in the coldness of the outer reaches of the solar system, there existed an ocean, much bigger and much deeper than any of the oceans here on Earth. An ocean so vast and so untouched that it could very possibly be home to as yet undiscovered alien life. Welcome to Europa, Jupiter's ocean world. Europa was discovered along with Io in 1610 by Galileo. It's a little bit smaller than our moon with a diameter of 3,100 kilometers and has a crust made of a special chemical compound called dihydrogen monoxide, H2O. Water. Yeah, the same stuff that comes out of our taps. Okay, so this is really cool, but Europa is around 780 million kilometers away from the sun. That's nowhere near the habitable zone, which is a special distance from the sun where it's warm enough for liquid water to exist, but not so hot that it all boils away. This means that Europa's massive oceans must be completely frozen over. 
right? Well, remember that thing I mentioned earlier called tidal flexing, where a moon is stretched and squashed because of the gravity of surrounding bodies? Well, Europa's orbit is also pretty eccentric, meaning that it's way more elliptical than perfectly circular. This also causes a stretching and a squashing of the little ball of ice, which significantly heats up the moon. So through this tidal heating, a warm enough temperature can be maintained beneath the surface of Europa to liquidize the ice that lies below. Also, ice is a really good insulator. This means that it's really good at trapping heat, stopping it from escaping into space. This means that Europa's icy surface is like a big blanket, keeping the vast oceans below it warm enough to exist in liquid form. Let me be clear, what we're talking about here is a vast liquid H2O ocean that potentially spans the entire subsurface of Europa, nearly the size of our moon, potentially 10 times as deep as any of the oceans here on Earth, possibly with hydrothermal vents on the sea floor. You can see where this is going. All of this information suggests that Europa might just be the place where we discover the holy grail of space exploration alien life. Seriously, scientists are genuinely considering the possibility that there may be an entire catalogue of unknown extraterrestrial oceanic beasts and creatures that are within our observable reach. The only concern they have with sending a probe up there to investigate is the possibility of contamination with earthly diseases, as the last thing we want is to finally discover life outside of Earth, only to watch it all die because of our interference. I don't know if we will discover extraterrestrial life in our lifetimes, but I'm going to call it right now that if we do, it won't be on some exoplanet hundreds of light years away. I think it will be right here in our solar system, on Europa. All of the building blocks are there, the geology is perfect and the supplies are seemingly plentiful, so there's absolutely no reason that whatever caused life to begin here on Earth some 3.8 billion years ago couldn't also have happened way out on Jupiter's sixth closest moon. All we have to do is well, go and find out. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.